Hello. Welcome to Matters With. I'm your host, Philip Bryan. Today, we're here to discuss Literary Matters With You, The House at the End of the World by Dean Koontz. Dean Koontz, international best-selling author who's written over 100 novels, had his first novel published in 1968, StarQuest. I've actually never read that book. However, I have read over 50 of Dean Koontz's novels, over 50 of the over 100 he has written. He has sold well over 400 million copies worldwide in his career. Once again, it started in 1968. The first Dean Koontz novel I had was in 1987. It was Watchers. But this isn't about Watchers. Not really. This is about The House at the End of the World, his latest novel that came out on 1 24 of 23. It is published by Thomas and Mercer and presented by Brilliance Audio. The printed version has 461 pages in hardback. That's for the North American version. The audio version is 10 hours and 22 minutes on Audible, and it is narrated by Natalie Nottis. I think I said that right, Natalie Nottis. She does a good job. She doesn't elevate the work, but she doesn't take away from it either. It's fine. No complaints and no pontificating about her amazing art form either. It was fine. I liked it. Good job. Good job, Natalie. All right, The House at the End of the World. Uh, our lead in this is a artist named Katie who has endured tremendous tragedy in her life, tremendous loss, tremendous pain. She retreats to an island that is a, a private island that had been previously owned by a man named Walter. Owned, occupied, I'm not sure which. Owned, owned. I'm going with owned. Let's go with owned. The name of the island is Jacob's Ladder Island. That can turn into a bit of a tongue twister. The previous occupant, Walter, who I'd mentioned before, kept an audio diary of events and perceptions and thoughts. She listens to Walter's audio diary and starts to wonder if the man might be a bit paranoid. Well, she also starts to notice odd things on the island herself. Maybe Walter wasn't that paranoid. Maybe Katie's paranoid. So this bit about her exploring the island, learning about it through Walter's audio diary as the previous occupant, also referencing the gentleman who lived on the island prior to Walter, Joe. Yeah, I think his name was Joe. I didn't write that note down. Reasonably sure it's Joe, though. If it's not Joe, I'm wrong. Walter lived on the island before Katie. Does this sound confusing? Well, here's the thing. What I just described, the bit with Katie exploring the island, and Walter living on it previously and her listening to his audio diary thinking he might be a little bit paranoid while you, the reader, start thinking she might be a little bit paranoid. Yet you also know something's coming. That stuff, her exploration, her listening to Walter's audio diary, that's the best stuff in the book. And it doesn't make a huge portion of the book. However, that all is very entertaining. The rest of it, not so much. Some agents come on the island. They want to identify who they're really with. They give some vague, non-real sounding Agency. I didn't write down the name of the agency either, but it doesn't sound real. It sounds made up. Anyway, it is made up. There's reasons that Katie should not trust them. They won't even really tell her what they're looking for. Some person, some thing, whatever it is, it is scary. It is science fiction. It is supernatural. It is something she should be afraid of, and it's dwelling on the island with her. Also, these agents are a bit of a danger. And by a bit, I mean a lot. So that's your opening premise of the book. More people come, well, another person comes, and that turns into a protection type of story. There's also some super, super excuse me, there's supernatural elements regarding a fox named Michael. Jay, here's the thing. I'm a big Dean Koontz fan, and I'm not a huge fan of this book. Because it is like... To cut to the chase, it's like somebody took every Dean Koontz novel that had ever been written, all one over 100 of them, I think it's 130 something, fed them into an AI and said, write me a Dean Koontz novel, the AI spits this out. This might as well be a, 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 that's an idea for one of Koontz's novels. Somebody has now replaced him with AI and is just generating novels that have similar traits, themes, characteristics, descriptions that he would write. However, it doesn't have the heart and soul of some of the stuff he's previously written. This is not a good Dean Koontz novel, but it is a passable novel if you've never read any of his work before. Because he has written novels that are absolutely excellent, such as Watchers, Lightning, Intensity. And even more recently, just a few years ago, he wrote the Nameless series, which was fantastic. If you've read his best work and are expecting that wow and that magic, it's not here. 
Uh, yeah, I look at this. I have Strangers. This is a good book. Also, down, look, there's more. See, hold on. Strangers, Watchers. Oh, one of my favorites. Twilight Ice. It has nothing to do with vampires. It was written in mid 80s. Uh, first edition, I think, it was 84. Second edition came out in 87 or 88. Fantastic story. Takes place in 63. It's about a kid at the carnival. But, sorry, I'm rambling. This review is not about those previous great works. It's about the house at the end of the world, which is not a book I really recommend. However, I do recommend the author because of those hundred odd books he's written, I personally have read 30 or more I would consider excellent and a lot are highly enjoyable. So even if this isn't your cup of tea, stick with them. You know what? Actually, here's my advice. Go get yourself a copy of Watchers. 1987, when you read it or listen to it, but on the lens of 1987, and that is, in my opinion, his best work, my favorite book by him. There's also Lightning's Very Good, Midnight. This book borrows so much from Midnight, this most current one that I keep not talking about because I'm talking about these other books. All right, I'm done with this. <laughs> Let me know what you think of The House at the End of the World if you've read it. I personally am not really recommending it. If you are a Dean Koontz completionist, please read it. It is better than some of his early, early, early work, but it is far from his peak performance and best material. If you don't read it, tell me what is your favorite book of his. And if you're not a fan, let me know why. Have you read some of his stuff and it didn't quite get you? Because uh, based on this and a few others, he's been inconsistent for the last at least 20 years. Prior to that, he went through a span from a mid 80s to late 90s, maybe in early 2000s. If you, yeah, I guess you could loop in Odd Thomas, even to the early 2000s of absolutely phenomenal work. Since then, very inconsistent, but there's a lot of good work there. Sorry, I, I, I think I'm rambling again. I had a lot of coffee, not Irish coffee, regular coffee with some coffee mate. All right. Dean Kuntz's The House at the End of the World. I gave it a C minus, or did I give it a C plus? Anyway, it's a C. If you're a completionist of his work, read it. If not, go pick up a copy of Intensity or Watchers or Phantoms. <laughs> Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms, yo. We'll talk soon.